Hey there, I'm Mina. And I'm Daryl. In this video series, we're going to take a closer look at the world. Way closer. We're going to uncover the hidden chemical changes that are responsible for the structure and functions of all living systems and support how we live. To understand them, we have to look deep inside. From the macroscopic to the microscopic to the molecular and even the atomic scale. Today we're taking a close look at how carbon is transformed during everyday events. Food, fuel, plants and animals, whether they're alive or dead, all contain carbon atoms and store or use energy. We're going to do an investigation and look a little closer to examine what's happening on a very, very tiny scale. Right, and today we're growing bread mold. Hey Nina, have you heard the buzz? Today we grow fuzz. Oh boy. Hey, Daryl. Nina, behold, it's time for mold. Ugh, please don't tell me that you're a fun guy. Nice. I won't. But we will have a fungus among us shortly because we've been growing bread mold, which is a fungus that grows on bread. Mold is alive, and it grows. So, since it takes about a week for the bread to mold, let's flash back to when we started this investigation. We started by putting some moist bread in petri dishes. Then we weighed the bread in the petri dishes. Our bread started out at 39.5 grams. That's before the mold started growing. That's right in line with the sample data from another classroom. Then we waited for the bread to mold. It took about a week. This bread's looking nice and gross. Ew. And now we put a dish of blue BTB in the chamber along with the bread, and then put the lid on. We want to find out if the concentration of CO2 will change. BTB is bromothymol blue. BTB changes color when carbon dioxide is added, like when you blow bubbles into it. We can use BTB to see if carbon dioxide concentrations increase in the air. And after one night, we'll check the color of the BTB again. Now we've got to figure out what the fungus has been doing to the bread. So, let's make some predictions. Mass changes. Do you think that the bread and mold together have gained mass, lost mass, or stayed the same as the mold grew? What do you think will happen to the blue BTB when we leave it in with the molding bread? To really figure out what's going on here, we need to consider three questions. The movement question. Where are atoms moving? The carbon question. What is happening to the carbon atoms? And the energy question. What changes in energy are taking place? OK, now we'll pause so you can make some predictions. OK, now it's time to weigh our bread now that we've got plenty of moldiness. And here are our mass changes. We started with 39.5 grams of bread, and now we're down to 37.6. That's a loss of 1.9 grams. And the BTB changed from blue to yellow. This is very similar to the results from the sample data from another classroom. What's the pattern in mass change for all the samples of moldy bread? And is there a pattern in the color changes in the BTB? Pause the video and discuss. Did a loss in mass match your prediction? It's funny that the mold grew, but the total mass of the bread and mold went down. So where did that mass go? And the change in the BTB color from blue to yellow means that there was a gain in the concentration of carbon dioxide. Where did the carbon dioxide come from? And here's another thing to think about. Is there any evidence of an energy change? Okay, so let's review the three questions. The bread definitely lost mass, even though mold grew on it. That means atoms were moving from the bread and the mold to somewhere else. There was a definite increase in the CO2 concentration. That means carbon atoms were moving from other molecules to CO2. And we should think about energy in this investigation. We know that growing mold takes and releases energy, and that energy must have come from somewhere. Hmm. This was great. Yeah, the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh. <laughs> Good luck in your investigations.